Hi, I'm Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here today with my friends from FaithCrafts.com and AllFreeKnitting.com to do have a little fun with this tulip tie-dye kit. Now, one of the things I'm really excited to show you is that you can dye more than just t-shirts like I've shown back here. But we are actually going to take advantage of this great kit to dye some cotton yarn in both ball form and some yarn that I've wound into a skein. The tulip kit is totally fantastic. It comes with uh, these squeeze bottles that already have some dye in it, so you just have to add water and shake them up. It's got plenty of plastic gloves and rubber bands for you to use in your project. And so really, all you need is to protect your work surface with a garbage bag, have some plastic bags to wrap up your finished dyed products, and of course, your what you plan to dye, which I've got here as 100% organic cotton yarn. Now, the packaging boasts that no soaking is required. You can just dye the materials straight. But I am choosing to pre-soak my yarn because I know this will make adding the, the dye to the yarn a lot easier. So I'm going to untwist my skein and I'm adding it to just plain tap water and submerging it. Um, you want, will want to submerge it until it sinks and let it soak until you know, it's decently wet. And I'm also going to just add this ball of yarn straight. You can see that the cotton yarn is floating, so you're going to want to um, really add some pressure to sink it and submerge it. Um, because you can see since it's slow to take up the water from just the soak, um, it would be slow to take up the dye itself. So this pre-soaking will make our lives easier. And we're back, and we're going to start by dyeing the cotton skein that we let pre-soak for over 30 minutes. And I have wrung out all of the excess water that I could to allow this to take up as much of the dye as possible. So now we're going to take these great squeeze bottles and start having some fun with a beautiful rainbow. The squeeze bottles that come with this tulip tie-dye kit are really fantastic. Um, but you can see that even though we have pre-soaked the wool, um, it does take, you know, initially the water from the dye does pool up uh, before it sinks in. So I would add it to the region you're going to add it slowly at first, and then work it through that section with your fingers. So that way you can try to avoid oversaturating the section. Isn't that pretty? And you can easily check to, for a penetration as well. I have rolls of paper towels um, handy so that way I can wipe off my hands and clean off my work surface. So I'm going to start with the basic colorations going around. And then I will go back and add more dye. So some yellow. I'm going to make my yellow section a little larger so that way I can try to add in some orange. By mixing colors. Green. And I like to start all my hand paintings in a slightly sloppy way um, to really get a sense of how far I'm going to go. Um, but eventually we should have this all covered up. Oops. And leave no space for white. So in the skein method, we have mo a lot more control over where the dye goes and our ability to work it back into the yarn. Um, when I dye the full ball of yarn next, we'll see that, um, you know, there will definitely be more white spots in the end, but I will have less 
a lot less precision over the, de the colors mixing and where they go. So you can see in this green section that there's, there's a couple white spots in there, um, but we've gotten fairly good coverage with the amount of dye that we started with. And if you, the paper towel, if you can't get all the dye off that you want, you can easily just go and rinse your hands with water. Um, I don't know if you can see me from there, but to get the extra shades off. But again, we're tie dyeing, and so mixing colors is part of the fun. So if we end up with some green in our orange, that's okay. Add some red and then some more yellow to our little orange section and mix this up and see how it goes. Now it's possible, oh that's not bad at all, um, by adding the colors on top of each other you can see that it's not a perfect orange and if we had blended the colors first in one of the squirt bottles we would have gotten um, a cleaner orange but I really actually kind of like that effect. Um, it's so great to have this kit and to finally be dyeing a cotton yarn. I've been, you know, since before now most of my dyeing has been Kool-Aid and food coloring. I've really been limited um, by what fibers I could dye, but this kit has opened up like a whole new world of color and fun. And see, you can blend the colors a bit. Unlike, you know, th since these take, since these colors will take so long to absorb to the cotton, um, because you know we're going to need to leave this to sit for uh, six, eight hours, maybe even overnight. Um, it gives you a little more flexibility over what you can do to get the colors to mix and stuff. But oh, this is beautiful. I am. Yeah. Well, I mean, I never have any fun when I'm dyeing yarn, especially, but you know, hopefully you guys get it as much of a kick out of watching me as I get out of actually doing it. Let's see, here's my blue. before I start doing kind of doing this. Um, and so what you know tie-dyeing typically you know as an art form is indicative of creating bright beautiful vibrant colors. But if you wanted to create duller colors you can create pastels by adding less more water to the dye. Um, and also you can limit the amount of time you let the dye remain on the cotton or whatever fiber it is that you're dyeing. So I really am checking and rubbing because I want as little, I'm going to rub some of this up in here with the purple, it's a nice overlap, I want as little white as possible. So we'll see how well this really works. Oh, that blue is so deep and gorgeous. Now, my favorite color is purple, and the purple snob in me will say that the purple in this kit is really more of a pink than a purple. But again, this is something that if you wanted a blue or purple, mix the blue and purple together and you'll get like a nice bluey purple color. Let's see, this, yeah, this one's the purple, oops. And one of the nice things about this is, so I like to make uh, a lot of items for babies. Um, knitting for babies has always been something that I've enjoyed. Um, 
and you know not only are they short projects but it's really fun to make something for your friends or family that are introducing a new person into their lives just checking for the whites um but a limitation to a lot of cottons is you can't always find them in bright vibrant colors like this so oh my gosh this is so pretty I am like completely overjoyed. I really hope that my final colors will be as bright as this is now. Uh, but yeah, so you know, you, since you can't always find baby cottons in bright, vibrant colors, you can take a pastel baby yellow and over dye it with some blue to make like a really brilliant, uh, well, depending on the dyes, you might end up with a greenish shade or more of a blue. But you really, you know, there is very little limit to what you can do if you're willing to dye your own. And you can also, you know, dye your finished product if you're not happy with the color. Just make sure that you wash the finished yarns or knitted garment uh, multiple times uh, so that way no dye leaks out because a new parent isn't going to want a lot of crazy care instructions. But it looks like we've got very good coverage. And, you know, this is 50 grams of material, and I still have, can you see my bottles? My bottles still have a lot of liquid in them. So we should, you know, with this kit, you can probably dye a lot of yarn. So before I wrap the skein up, I'm going to go around and try to mop up some of this extra dye, um, because I don't want to get a ton of additional bleeding. But as in my hand painting tutorial, I put saran wrap down over my plastic bag. And so in kind of a donut shape, so that way I will keep these colors as separate as possible to uh, reduce the amount of cross bleeding that we get. Um, so I'm gonna fold the outside over first. And then kind of roll it in to the inside. Bring it in and another paper towel. wipe off our surface. And I will use a little more plastic wrap. So we just don't want, we want it to remain wet while the dye is absorbing. Even though I'm a chemist, I'm not sure about the chemistry of tie dyeing, but you know, this is wrapped up to keep things moist and you know to eliminate leakage. And then finally, I'm gonna place this whole thing into a standard grocery bag. Um, so again, add another layer of protection but also try to catch any leaks that may form. And I'm gonna place this in a nice secondary container while I wait my six to eight hours. So we've laid down some fresh plastic wrap and we have our ball of yarn. And again, I am going to do, I think, a rainbow on this ball of yarn. But you'll see that it's, I will have a lot less uh, control over adding the dye as I do did with the skein. Um, and since I'm dealing with the end here, I can soak up this extra dye that I leave. Um, but I'm just putting the tip of the dye container on here and squeezing in the dye.
Yeah, and you can see as I made that nice little puddle of yellow dye right there, that my ability to make the rainbow in order may not be as strong. But that does not make this any less fun. So it doesn't take a lot of pressure to get the dye out. See, I'm just kind of painting the outside. But let's see if you can see if I move these fibers aside, you can kind of see, oh, my hand's in the way. There is a lot of white closer to the interior. So you can kind of put the tip more towards the center, kind of work it into the center of the ball a bit and squeeze to add some dye. That's the green. And I've done whole ball, well, get more yarn cakes than balls but dyeing using some other methods um, and you'll find those also find those tutorials on my channel but those uh, I will always take the yarn out of the skein and wind it up as I'm letting it dry otherwise it'll just take far too long and finally my my fake purple my fuchsia adding some paint to the end, or dye paint. Who am I kidding? Oh. Oops. Might lose some yellow with some of these darker colors. All right, our ball of yarn is very nice and dark. And, well, with the limited amount of pulling that I've done, it's hard to see um, huge areas of white. And I can tell from what I've added and from the other skein that there should be enough dye in there. So again, it's time to wrap it up. And I am going to wrap it up, but I'm I'm going to try very hard to not squeeze it because I do not want to have, I don't want the dyes to mix completely. And especially since this is a slow dye process and this is going to have to sit for so many hours, um, I really want, you know, as little diffusion to take place as possible. And so into my grocery bag. And I'm going to go let this sit. All right. We have let our beautiful cotton dye overnight. And now we're ready to unwrap it. So this is our skein. And I'm going to just pull out the yarn. And look at these rich colors. Then I'm going to take it immediately to a batch of water and plonk it in. And you can see the colors coming out 
immediately because there is a lot of excess dye when you tie dye. And so this is some warm water, but even with all the dye coming out, you can see, still see that there is a lot of color that's left. But we're gonna need to rinse this in multiple batches. Since this is cotton, hot water is fine. And you're gonna wanna rinse it until the water runs clear and you have all the excess dye out. And then when the water runs clear, you're gonna add some laundry soap to wash it. I wouldn't recommend washing a full skin yarn in the washing machine, uh, just because you don't want it to get hopelessly tangled. But it will take multiple rinses to get the dye out. And while that is going, you can rinse multiple things at the same time, but we've got our ball of yarn right here. I'm also gonna put the ball of yarn into wash in the same pot. It's all the same dye. Um, but the ball of yarn will be a little harder to rinse out. Um, but you can see now, breaking towards the center, we do have some nice color in there. But after I wind this ball of yarn, after it's dried a bit and I wind it into a skein, I will then rinse it even more because, uh, you know, you can't really get a good surface area on that. So yeah, once the water's run clear, and you can expect even more dye to come out once you add the soap, but once the water's run clear, then hang it to dry. It's gonna take a long time for this ball of yarn to dry on its own. So I'm using my Nitty Knotty to wind it into a four foot skein. Here are our finished tie dyed cotton yarns. You can see that the one that I hand painted, the sections of color are much more defined um, and are bigger. Whereas, you know, you can see in this little section here how short each of the color sections are when we dyed uh, a whole ball of yarn. But these are just two ways that you can have fun using a tie-dye kit with cotton yarn. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and this video was brought to you by allfreeknitting.com.